How you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today we're going to be doing a walk around our Della Pena vertical honing machine. So it's a 1963 model machine I believe. It was originally commissioned for the British Navy. Uh, it did Harrier jump jet landing legs in its years of production over there. It has an original 549 hours on it. After the machine was uh, decommissioned, it was brought to Australia by a local machine uh, trading company. My mate who had a machine shop up in Brisbane bought it from them. It had very little use in his workshop and sat there for about 20 odd years, unused. He offered me the machine. So I sent a truck up to pick it up and I brought it home. After we got the machine delivered to the workshop, it sat in the doorway for about three months before I did anything with it. And after we finally plugged it in and got it all, sort of everything starting to move again, we found out the main drive motor for the honing head had been burnt out. So we bought a new one, installed that and the machine started to work. This was the first day we actually fired up the machine, uh, started working out sequences to uh, get the machine to run and generally just work out exactly what it was going to do. There was a few things we had to try and iron out in the way of features the machine had that we were no longer using. So after plugging hoses and deleting things out of the machine, we could finally get the machine to run and cycle and hone as well as pump oil. So after we got the machine going and figured out what everything did, uh, we got a bit agricultural in the way of mounting honing heads and everything to the machine, uh, which we later uh, improved on all those methods. Uh, the machine's standard length of stroke was about 900 mil. That wasn't enough for everything we did. It got us out of trouble for a couple of months, but then we went into modifying pretty much everything in relation to the drive head, the cylinders for lifting and lowering the, the drive head and everything else. So after all the modifications, the machine now strokes 1500 mil. So we'll go through a few of, uh, a few of the bits and pieces we did. We'll start at the bottom of the machine in the way of modifications. So these are actually the original uprights that were used for the Harrier jump jet landing legs. Uh, I've since removed the cylinders that would clamp the, jump, the, the landing leg in there. Uh, they used to be mounted on the inside and come down and played across the top for the hone head to sit inside. Removed all that stuff, we didn't need it. We just welded some V-blocks to it, uh, put some chains in to use as a clamp so we can uh, grab a hold of the barrel without it spinning on us. It goes for modifications to make the machine stroke a little bit longer. Uh, I've made new cylinders for it, new guide rods, new drive shaft for it, and it was made on a, um, over a weekend because I needed them the following Monday for a couple of jobs. So as it goes to the material, we brought in the cylinder tube, the 7 8 chrome rod, a 2.5 inch induction hardened chrome bar for the guide rods, a bit of 2.25 inch just standard chrome bar for the main drive shaft. We had to lift the head plate of the machine up. We also had to lift this bar that goes across the top of the machine that the two cylinders use to lift and lower the drive head. So along with all the extra material we had to get in for the, uh, for the modifications, I also had to get in a piece of 100mm uh, bronze material to make up a new slide bushing to power the home head. We've also removed a lot of extra bits and pieces off the machine that weren't needed. Uh, back when the machine was running its original hydraulic driven home head, 
uh, there used to be another drive motor up top there to advance and retract the stones. We don't use that system anymore, so we got rid of that. Extra weight doesn't need to carry around. And the machine, although it's been modified, we still have all the original parts for the machine. Nothing got scrapped. They're all up in the shelf, so if ever I need to put this machine back to standard, I can. Nothing's been modified to the point it can't be salvaged. So as it goes for machine configuration today, there are a few things on it uh, that we have to use in a different way because of the tooling we're using, such as this limit switch. That limit switch there is the end stop limit switch when it had its original Delapina honing head on it. At the moment we can't use it in the way it was configured so we've had to modify it and use it manually. So the stroke limits on the machine are set by limit switches going down, uh, going all the way to the bottom, all the way to the top. So simply just unscrew these and move them down to wherever you desire them to be. There's actually a pull rod inside here that attaches to the honing head. And it goes down to this cam plate, which engages the limit switches. Strikes the switch and tells it to go back up or back down. There goes the snake. As it goes for the speed for the honing head, that's all done by this knob here. This knob runs a cable that runs up into the gearbox of the motor, so you can increase or decrease the, the speed of the, um, the honing head. We've also got a hydraulic flow controller here, which controls the speed of the, the honed head carriage being lifted and raised and lowered. Lowered and raised. So, f slow or fast. You've got heaps of little spots in between. We generally run it at about six. We're going to follow this machine up, show you the cycles, up, down, feeds and speeds. For a machine that was built in the 60s, this thing was pretty smart. So we'll go ahead and fire it up and show you exactly what it does. the settings you've got, a few of the buttons, you can, you can actually stop and idle within your, within your barrel.
are some of the controls that no longer get used with the machine. Uh, our hone expansion doesn't get used, our hone retract doesn't get used, and our hone expansion normal manual doesn't get used either. The rest of the buttons will be used. So in case anyone's wondering uh, why there was no oil flowing around while we are running the machine earlier, uh, the oil only turns on when you hit the start cycle button and you turn this tap on here on the side of the machine. So there is no way to turn the oil off while the machine's running except for that tap. So once you hit that start cycle button, uh, that pump kicks in and oil starts flowing. So there is a bit of a sequence to get the hone head to fire up as well as you and get everything working. The machine needs to start at its bottom limit switch. If you try and start the cycle while it's midway through, uh, nothing fires up. It's part of the way the system was set up back in the day. metal separator out of the honing machine. The oil gets pumped from the main bed while the cylinder is being honed through that sludge pump down there, up through this pipe, comes through this hole and goes into the centrifuge. The centrifuge spins at some unbelievable RPM and separates the metal from the oil. So I'm going to go and open that up and clean it out because it's full. This is a rubber bladder they put in here to catch all the oil and the steel. We'll just take this over to the bed and empty out what oil is in it rather than tip it straight back into the machine. As you can see, the steel is very thick, so that's grinding paste from the stones and the steel.
<laughs> stinky. So after you've spent three years cleaning all the shit out of it, I will generally spray some anything, just some sort of lubricant back inside the bowl so that releases next time. Otherwise they tend to get stuck in there pretty good. These just put that straight back down in the hole. Make sure it's seated, get all the air out of it. We go and reinstall the flutes. She's ready to go again. So with the oil for these machines, there is thousands of dollars worth of oil um, to fill this machine. This machine holds 190 litres. Um, we do keep the fines that come out of the machine. Uh, if you leave them sit long enough, the fines will settle to the bottom and the oil will come to the top and you can skim that off, put it back in the machine. Yeah, depending what chemicals you use to clean this, you have to be careful because some of the chemicals will break down the oil and ruin it. And this is, uh, this is proper sun and honing oil. Uh, we only use sun and honing oil because that's the stone sets we use. And that's what they have worked out works perfectly, so we're not going to change it. So as it goes for tooling for the machine, we run sun and obviously. We don't run the standard Della Pena tooling. A, it's very hard to get. B, it's very, very, very expensive. You don't get a very big range in whatever head you buy. I think you only get about an inch of range. So with the Sun and stuff, you can go from two and a half inches out to 15 inches. It's a Sun and ANR 275 adjustable honing head, heavy duty. Uh, we had to come up with our own way of getting it in and out of the machine. So this is just a standard PDO coupling that, came, that comes off a tractor. It's pretty easy, pretty basic, just push the button in. Pull the spline down, hone head's now released, same thing to put it back in. Just made it a lot easier than the first method I was using. Right guys, a bit of a shout out to one of our uh, uh, keyboard warriors. We're going to explain the very simple and very easy to understand way that this honing head works. While they're actually spinning, the honing head is running, if you grab a hold of this spin wheel here and lock it up, it will actually advance the honing stones out to, to uh, cut the barrel. So the more you hold onto that, the more weight you're going to put on those stones. Uh, these do have a clutch built into them, so you can't overload them. A lot of people do remove the clutches and end up smashing the hone heads. Not recommended. And also for the same keyboard warrior, ask the question why there aren't four stones on this. I wanted to know what these things were. So you've got two stones opposite each other and two guides. So just to really simplify it, the stones do the cutting, the guides hold the stone head in the centre of the barrel. The guides are actually sacrificial, they will wear out evenly along with the stones. Pretty simple. We're going to go through a few of the attachments we use for the, uh, for the honing heads. We have master stone holders. We have these in all sorts of different lengths and sizes for different size barrels. With those you need to run a stone support. So these support the stone, the, the master holders while the honing's happening. Stop all the vibration and horrible sounds coming out of it. So as it goes for stones we use, uh, the A25s are probably one of the most aggressive stone you can use. We'll generally use these starting in a barrel that hasn't, ha hasn't been pre-honed or hasn't been machined. Um, very, very good for rounding out a barrel or taking out any sort of high spots in them. So after the A25s, we'll go in with the A47s. The A47s aren't as aggressive as the 25s, but they are a much harder stone. They put up with a bit more punishment. After we've gone through with the 47s, we'll chuck in the 45s. 
The A45s are a good metal remover, so quite an aggressive stone, very good at removing metal, not as hard as the 47s. And then once you've gone through a, set of, oh, a couple of sets of those, you've got the barrel out to size, you're going with the uh, J87s, which are the finishing stones. As a bit of a baseline on how many uh, stone sets we will go through honing an unhoned barrel uh, to bring it out to size, we'll usually do about four to five sets of stones. So we'll go in with the 25s, get the barrel nice and round, go in with the 47s, get pretty nasty with them. A couple of sets of A45s, we'll get the barrel out to size, and then you'll throw in the 87s to finish the barrel off. You probably do all those sets just removing about a mil to a mil and a half of material out of the barrel, depending on what the uh, inside dome of the barrel is like, um, how rough it is, how round it is, um, imperfection, stuff like that. So if anyone out there in YouTube land or has seen or run one of these machines. I mean, we know nothing about the machine. We don't have any manuals for it. Uh, Della Pena themselves can't give us any information about it. Um, if you've seen, heard, or been around one, leave a comment for us, because anything you know, we'd love to know. So that concludes the tour of the machine. Uh, let us know what you think of her, and see you next time. machine that was built in this oh, we started going up the machine oh wait we're not even talking about mods yet are we yes all oh, right are uh, the seven eight rods which is oh, for fuck's sake as it goes for the honing head of the machine what the honing head is it so we're going to do a bit of a shout out to a youtuber who's a fucking know-it-all so very simple not difficult i don't think i need to get out my crayons but if you can't understand that, you're a fuckwit. Now then. <laughs> got me in the eye. <laughs> this stuff smells delicious. Dirty jobs. Dirty jobs. <laughs> Micro. Micro, come on in. <laughs>